Can somebody explain to me exactly what black women did to make every damn near every race, even a lot of our own black men, hate us? Sure can. Took advantage of government assistance. Kicked the side of the house. Joined the feminist train and demonized your men. Allowed billions of dollars every year to exit our community on fake aesthetics of beauty. Praised and joined homosexual men while demonizing heterosexual men that assert themselves. Took our children away from us and used them as bargaining chips to further financially disenfranchise us. Used sex as a weapon in our intimate relationships to get what you want. Became the only women in the world to tell the world that they don't need their men. Perpetuated the trope that black women are the backbone of black communities, which directly implies that black men have no spine and are useless. Continually pushing the narrative that black women are the winners of the oppression Olympics while not having any metric of which they are treated worse than black men. Allowed their weight to slip such that sexual attraction is diminished. Hot girl summer. Engaged heavily in prostitution, legal sex work, only fans, etc. And then demanded that your men protect and respect you. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I can make a part two. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, if you guys saw my video. The, like the, sorry. If you saw my video the other day. Um, there was another guy when a woman was saying that, you know, black men hate us. And he just got in his bag, similar to this guy, just, list, just listing it off. But black women, we keep saying, you know, men don't talk to us. They're not telling us what they want. Across the board, every man I'm running into, and not just black men. I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is happening for men of all races are, are saying these things. Over and over, men are telling me that women in particular, and in particular in our community, in the black community, these things are the things they have had to live with and see and accept for decades. That, you know, and then black women will wonder why, well, well how come, you know, black men aren't ish? But the reality is most of our black men were raised by single mothers. So who came first, the chicken or the egg? And I'm not here to start beef or whatever, but reality is reality. And I know a lot of people are offended by reality. They're offended by truth. Um, but I'm sorry. Grow up. It is the truth. It is reality. Your feelings or anecdotal evidence does not negate what is going on in mass. He laid out, and a lot of people don't understand the history of this country. They don't understand the history of our dynamics and our, and our culture a lot of things that were programmed into us so that we have these dysfunctional relationships, these dysfunctional attitudes. And I want you to think about it. We're so divided. Do you really think that wasn't on purpose? You really think black men and black women weren't divided for a reason? But see, it when we don't, when critical thinking is not prioritized in the home or the school system, women in particular, we go off our emotions. We go off the usual tropes that this man laid out. We go on, we don't, it's a, it's a circle jerk. We have, it's an echo chamber of women saying all these things are okay. And if any man tries to say anything and break through into our echo chamber, he's quickly, you know, dismissed. He's quickly chastised. He's quickly put down. Or what do we do? We get argumentative. We start over speaking him. We have to win at all costs. It doesn't matter if our arguments are flawed. It doesn't matter what evidence says. It doesn't matter what reality is telling us. As long as we feel it, it must be the same thing with queens, bosses, divas. Where is this? Like this, these are this is language full of pride. All of these things are full of pride because women don't want to listen. We are so full of pride and ego. And what do we know? Pride comes before the fall. Whenever you are in pride like this, especially as a group, look at look at where we're going as black women. We have continued to fall because our pride will not let us say, you know what? We got it wrong. You know what? We're doing it wrong. You know what? I need to change. You know what? I need to repent. I can't say, well, what about the men? What are they doing? How come you don't dress them? I want to be honest with you. For the past few decades, are you really going to tell me that men haven't been called out over and over and over again? Constantly? Even in like sitcoms that you may watch even growing up. Did you ever see these strong, masculine men in these sitcoms, really guiding the family, directing the family, doing anything? No. How do they present the man? Usually as this bumbling idiot. The father's just a fool and mom's got to be, the mom is more of running the family and being more stern and being the one is just like, your father, or looking at him crazy because he comes up with these crazy dad antics. 
these movies and TV shows, everything is to denigrate the voice of a man to make him seem lesser than women so that any feelings he has, anything he says, we can outright dismiss it because we've been programmed to just say, oh, men don't know what they're talking about. Women are smarter. We got this together. We know, girl, these men are they stupid. Girl. girl, they dumb. You know how it goes. And so we've got to start asking the hard questions, looking in the mirror, stop deflecting. Deflecting means you hear truth and you push it back on someone else because you don't want to deal with the consequences of that. You don't want to deal with the reality of it. You don't want to internalize it so that you have to change and really question who you are. But we need to hold a mirror up to ourselves to reflect and to look at who am I? What are the things I'm believing? What are the things that I was taught as a child, whether directly or indirectly? What are the belief systems of my friends? The, people, the, th the shows I'm looking at, the books I'm reading, the magazines, the articles, the blogs, the celebrities that I love so much. Do you really think all of this is just, you know, oh, it just happens to be like that? I want you to start critically thinking about the voices that speak to you and are telling you that this type of thing is okay. We got to start listening to men and what they want. If you want to be with a man, a good quality man, he is not going to accept these types of things. He's not going to accept these attitudes. Is anyone perfect? No. Will he be perfect? No. But it's a willingness to change. It's a willingness to listen. It's a will. It's a su submissiveness, a humility. You know, even nowadays, you can't even the word submissive is a negative word. And that shows you how sh how far we've strayed from our creation, from our creator. We're just living unto ourselves, living in pride, no humility, no willingness to listen. We're argumentative. We um we're angry, we're bitter, and we don't understand that we are hurting ourselves with these actions. We think they're empowering because that's what we've been programmed to believe, but it's not. It's disempowering us, and it's making us slip further and further and further down the food chain to, I don't know where we'll be in 10 years, actually five years, 10 years, 20 years. Where will this go if we, if we as women do not start fighting against this narrative getting the therapy we need, coming to the end of ourself, letting go of the pride that says you don't need no man and men are worthless and men aren't this, that, and the other. Until we get to that point, we will continue to decline and there'll be no hope for dating or marriage.